lot of people ask me what they should look for in a home grinder. And myself, industry professionals, most people you talk to are going to say, get a burr grinder. But why? So today we're actually gonna dive into it. We're gonna do some mini experiments of a burr grinder versus a blade grinder. Let's start with introducing all the pieces we're gonna be using today. We've got my impronounceable scale, uh, 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 we've got my burr grinder, one of the prize pieces of my collection, and something new this time on lend from a friend, a very handy blade grinder. Now, let's talk about some bias. Obviously, I am biased towards a burr grinder, but I'm going to be doing this in good faith. I'm going to be working as hard as I can to make this fair, and we'll walk you through all the steps we're using. Let's start with introducing what a burr grinder is and how it works. Burr grinder is, well, described after the burrs that you'll find inside of it. They work by basically crushing everything that goes through it. They're preferred because of the consistency that happens. All the grinds, all the beans will start on top. They'll have to pass through the burrs and they'll come out as grinds at the bottom. Since they have to pass through this even space, they're gonna be more consistent when they pass through. There's less of a chance of them bouncing up and around or being reground, getting too fine or too coarse. The way a blade grinder works is, well, rather straightforward. There is a blade. The blade spins and every time it passes, it cuts through everything that's inside of it. The downside with the blade grinder is everything is stuck inside with the blade for the duration. Large chunks could get missed and small chunks could get cut over and over, resulting in a highly inconsistent problem. And the name of the game here is consistency. It's not to say that a blade grinder is going to make a bad cup of coffee, but if you make several cups side by side, say for a party or every morning ritual, they're going to taste different. Now that we know what we're looking at, let's actually grind it and compare how they look side by side. As you can see, we have some fines and we have some coarse, but for the most part, it's quite consistent. Don't be afraid to just get in there, to get in there and touch your coffee. You can feel a grind setting. You can feel if it's even, you can feel if there's bigger chunks, if there's smaller chunks and move it around. And it's natural that there will be a little bit of inconsistency, but for the most part, and that's what we're looking for, overall, it's looking quite good and quite even. I'm gonna confess that I don't have a lot of experience working with blade grinders, but I'm gonna do my absolute best, and you have to trust me on this, to do as good of a job that I can. I'm gonna try and aim to reproduce the same sort of consistency we got from the burr grinder, and we're doing that because I know that's how I like my coffee. The nice thing about a burr grinder is I can set it to a setting and get the same thing over and over. Let's see if I can't reproduce what we made. All right, now, <laughs> Let's just test that I know how this works. It's plugged in, power, we're safe. All right. That seems extremely straightforward. Add the beans. That's all right, let's do our best. That's startling. <laughs> All right, so that's been going pretty well there. So right now you can see we have full beans left in there. Like some of these beans haven't even been touched and we're already starting to get some powder. But we're not even close to other things. So let's keep going. Let's see, let's see how good we can do here. Okay, this is our second check now. Safety, power is off. That's looking better. That's looking a lot better. You can see the bigger chunks are now smaller. And then we've got, we've got quite a lot of fines, but as we move around, as we dig in there, you can see there's still some really big chunks. So I guess that means we keep going. Hmm? Yeah, oh, that's, I think that's pretty good. I think we're there, question? No, 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 a <laughs> little bit more. I thought we were there and then I shook it and it revealed a whole secret pocket of large pieces. So let's, one more try. There we go. Let's now transfer both of these into, I don't know, let's call them science ramekins. Yeah. This is the coffee from the blade grinder. 
Now, interesting to note, we have a lot of ultra fines that are basically glued to the bottom here. Wow, look at how fine it got in there. It's like dust. All right, and now for the burr grinder. So let's hold these up side by side. Ooh, I did a pretty good job. When we look at the burr grinder on the side here, you can see a mixture of some larges and some fines, but overall, it's fairly consistent. When we go to the blade grinder here, while there's still the same large chunks, the amount of fines that we have are much higher. Visually, you can see the large pieces that are still left in there, like little pockets that are that are completely different and the fines everywhere. Whereas, well, a little bit present in the burr grinder as well, it's not quite the same. But that's just one experiment. That's not how science works. Let's do this three more times. All right, more grinding, let's go. God. Yeah, once again, once again, look at that. This is a whole coffee bean. This is a completely untouched coffee bean, holy moly. I've been told to try the martini shake technique. Ooh. Huh. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. That was pretty good. So the first one here, I stopped when I saw the majority of the coffee looking as consistent as possible and you could see the amount of large pieces that were still left there. Our second one here is the most consistent in that there are fewer large chunks, but it's very, very, very powdery. Our third one, our third one actually came out pretty good. I'm happy with that. And if we add our original one, you can see that they all come from the same device, but the problem here, and this is, and this is what I talk about consistency. The problem here is they're all different. I did my absolute best to replicate it. And I couldn't, I failed. And I think that's just the nature of, of the blade grinder. It's not making a bad cup of coffee, it's just an inconsistent cup of coffee. Let's go back down to the plate here and let's switch it out for the burr grinder. This is, this is what we were aiming for. This is, this was our ideal texture and you can see places where it's similar, but at no point were we able to kind of get there. I mean, we're so close. This is too fine. This is too coarse. And this is probably, probably the closest, but we just couldn't get there. Let's talk about our grinders. Burr grinder is gonna run somewhere between 60 and $140. Kind of steep. Blade grinder, probably only 10 to $16. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. What a burr grinder will offer though, is the ability to work for multiple different types of coffee. I can adjust it. I can go from a fine grind setting all the way to a coarse setting. I can't do that with a blade grinder. I can guess, I can try and stop, but the blade grinder doesn't offer that much control. So in conclusion, when you're looking at to buy a grinder, this is why people recommend the burr grinder. If you wanna make the same coffee every morning, if you find that brew method that you really love, or if you have a couple of different ones, this is your go-to. A lot of people are under the assumption that you can't get your coffee pre-ground, that somehow that ruins it. That's not entirely true. When you roast coffee, two things come out of it. And this is a massive oversimplification. There are oils and there are gases. Oils are good, gases are bad. And that's actually why a lot of coffee bags have the little valve here. It's not so you can squeeze and smell it, it's so that the gases can release. And that's what indicates the freshness of coffee. Most coffee, when it's roasted, is good for about six weeks to two months. You got a lot of time to drink your coffee. All that pre-grinding is doing is shortening that shelf life by a couple of weeks. So if you don't wanna spend the money, but you want that consistent coffee, that a burr grinder can do, get your favorite cafe to grind it for you when you buy it.